Heroes and villains. Every story has to have them. Otherwise, you don't have a story. You have a plot line. You have a book report. You have to have the hero, which is officially termed the protagonist, because pro means in favor of. And you have to have the villain officially labeled the antagonist, because ant means against. So you have to have somebody working against the hero. A story where everything works out for somebody is a fairy tale. And actually, even with fairy tales, you've got some pretty heavy villains. Snow White, uh, Sleeping Beauty, The Three Little Pigs. Classic stories that show a hero in a struggle. Because that kind of brings us to the understanding of a hero. What is a hero? A hero is a person who has to overcome something to achieve something. And right now, we're kind of redefining the concept of a hero. In the old days, you had the, you know, from examples of Greek mythology, fairy tales, tales of chivalry, some person who goes out on a quest and, you know, has to overcome insurmountable odds, usually with the assistance and help of a magical being or magical tools, vanquish some person who's been very cruel, oppressive, and unjust, in their opinion, and then become the Messiah, the one who saves the day, redeems the kingdom, rescues the princess and everything. And those are very outdated. The concept of the knight in shining armor rescuing the damsel in distress really supports an image that facts and history don't necessarily support. I don't think I would consider Boudicca, the Celtic chieftain who nearly drove the Romans out of Britain, a damsel in distress. Um, Joan of Arc certainly wasn't. Catherine the Great. Uh, even Lucrezia Borgia, I suppose, if you wanted to really carry this thing far. But there have been all kinds of very strong women that usually had to show up and St. Genevieve of Paris, everybody was in terror of the siege that Attila the Hun had on the what's now the city of Paris and St. Genevieve, a you know, young maiden, decided, uh, no, I don't think so. And she commandeered some boats and broke through the siege to bring food into a starving city. She was a nun. She was unarmed. She was also under the age of 20. And there was... Plenty of damsel, very little distress in that thing. And then later on, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, you had the golden age of comic books. And you've got superheroes. You've got Superman, who came from a distant planet. So he has all kinds of superpowers. You have Batman, who is a billionaire, so he can come up with all these really cool gadgets. The same thing with Iron Man. You have the Hulk who went through something where he now has super strength. You know, you've got all these people that have something special given to them to make them a hero. But a hero is somebody who has to face all those same challenges. Doesn't necessarily have a magic sword, a magic shield, a magic ring, a wand, you know, a fairy godmother or something watching over them, helping them to do this, to pick up the slack whenever they're struggling. The hero, or heroine, if you want to use another outdated term, is somebody that has to overcome a challenge with nothing but their own resolve to do it. That is a hero. That is somebody who has just said, I'm not going to give up. Like Rocky Balboa, I didn't hear no bell one more round when, you know, to everybody else, he's been pounded into a bloody pulp. So, contrast. To that, you have a villain uh, in the story of Robin Hood, King John, taking over from a beloved English king, Richard the Lionhearted, you know, oppressing the people with cruel taxes, mostly leveled because he was trying to regain all the land that got lost because Richard had taken all the armies into the crusade. So, uh, kind of left England in distress. So he raised repressive taxes. So you needed Robin Hood to come and stick up for the little people. Simon Legree in Uncle Tom's Cabin, you know, the slave owner, the chased everybody across the, the rivers, you know, and they had to escape on ice blocks. And was going to take the young girl and sell her into slavery. And Snidely Whiplash in the Dudley Do-Right comics, uh, you know, the one that would 
tie little Nell to the railroad tracks to make her give him the deed to the ranch and all sorts of other things. Sometimes they're not that clear cut. Sometimes they're the ones who are looking like they're on your side. Yeah, it goes back. Yeah, the hidden villains, the ones that really deceive you, the ones that tempt you and say, do you think they really meant this? Maybe they meant don't do this, so you can still do it because you're not really doing that. Sort of like the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Or, you know, they're only telling you not to do this because they don't want you to be better than them. They don't want you to be more successful than them. And all the time, they're standing on your throat. Or the people that will come up to a character or come up to you and say, don't worry, I'll take care of this for you. You just go on and I'll handle all this. In the meantime, you are not noticing how much that they're scooping off and putting in their pockets and leaving you with a small amount. You know, there are all kinds of hidden villains, people that you think you can trust, but you can't. You know, that's what makes a story really interesting, with nothing being the obvious. The one that everybody thinks is the great guy, the all-American or the fantastic model, wealthy, powerful, smart, and so, of course, all that, they're successful. That means they have to be good. Not necessarily. If you want to find a good example of heroes and villains, just the basic outline, yeah, go back to the old fairy tales. Because they're, the villain is always somebody who has to connive and cheat and everything because they can't achieve this on their own. And they recognize in whoever their opponent is, the hero, or heroin, somebody who does have the ability to pull this all off. Not necessarily a magical ability, but just their own talent and skills and everything. And they realize that this is a threat. You know, that's the other thing about a villain, hidden or obvious, is they are always looking out for the challenge because they know they don't belong where they are. And there is somebody who does belong where they are. And that somebody is probably going to be coming along before too long. So if you want my tip, give your villain a complete sense and awareness of their own inferiority because their inferiorities and their insecurities are going to be what will drive them to do the things they do, to hang on to whatever power, position, prestige they're going to have stuff they're not entitled to. And give your protagonist, if you will, more inclusive term, give your protagonist all kinds of the things your villain doesn't have, but it's not that obvious to them. Circumstances have taught them to doubt themselves. And so their first quest and their first obstacle is going to be overcoming their own perceptions. That's really the basic template. In overcoming that, they realize, I can stand up, I can do this, I can challenge X, Y, Z, and win. I think it was Erin Brockovich, you know, when she took on the big chemical company in the lawsuit, you know, she knew she was right. She knew that this was wrong and things were going on. Uh, Silkwood, Karen Silkwood, she knew that people were dying of radiation exposure and that, you know, the, the place they worked for, the chemical, whatever, was not taking care of everybody. And so she was making it public and, you know, they had to kill her to quiet her down. But that ended up being the catalyst for getting her story out there and attracting all that attention. So you don't necessarily have to resort to, you know, the, the old tropes from, you know, mythology and comic books and everything. There are all kinds of other ways to come up with a very powerful and convincing protagonist and a very powerful and convincing antagonist. You know, the antagonist has to be somebody or something that you are somehow convinced can't be brought down. Because then when it does happen, you realize your protagonist is kick-ass. So, good luck.